around here. Hi, this is Al Graham. And we've got our good guest, uh, Waylon, today. Uh, we needed him to help us with some bodkin points because we're back with a special day. We're testing our bolted Trinity weave that was sent to us by Ordos uh, Zavasek from Slovenia. Uh, hold on, pronouncing that? Slovenia? Slovenia. Slovenia. Yeah, Sol Slovenia. And uh, he sent it to us a while back. We tested it with all types of melee weapons and some thrown weapons, like some javelins and stuff. No penetration, no damage. So we got our good friend Waylon, who's an amateur uh, blacksmith, to make us some uh, bodkin style point arrows, and he brought us a more powerful bow. A more powerful pound. About 60, 65 pound draw weight. And of course, we got our trusty 45 pound. We've tested other videos with uh, armor, so we have it here as a comparison. That's right. I yeah. think that's going to perform much better than Oh, yeah, this is going to be. It's not gonna be quite brutal, a war bow, but. More up there, more 60, 70 pounds is in that range. It's gonna be two buku. Yeah, at least early period war. Yeah, two buku. Two buku. And well, uh, he brought plenty of arrows for us uh, and took good care of us. So we're set here. Heck yeah, man. Let's get this Thank going. You, and we're gonna also do let's some other mail tests. Some holes. Yeah, let's see if we make some holes in some armor. Uh, we're gonna test some other mails as well. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing some uh, yeah. silver soldered and some butted mail and just canvas and see what it can do. Damn right, let's get, get to started. work. Right. We have our 20% 20, 20 ballistics gelatin here, and we're setting up our test for our mail. Uh, what I've done here is I've got a nice amount of gambeson. This is about the amount that someone would wear with padding and with layers of cloth to protect yourself under mail. Now, if someone's just wearing standalone gambeson, there could be a lot more layers. Let's say 30 layers of tightly woven linen, not just like 10 or 15. This is probably around 15, something like that. So. In this case, there's a chance it could go through the mail and into the body. Whereas if we did 30 layers, the gambeson alone would be enough to stop the arrow, but you couldn't have that in bends of the arm and under the arm and stuff. It'd be way too thick. And this you could possibly actually have in those areas. So we're going to go ahead and put this up here. Figure out the best way to do it. And all the mail will be going over this gambeson. All right, we've got our bodkin points. Uh, as you can see, these are, are uh, they have a uh, uh, pyramid style shape. They have four sides. Some of them have three sides, but ours happen to have four. Uh, and I've got a 45 pound bow. We're going to test our gambeson and see if it's possible so we're not cheating with our mail to pierce the gambeson and go into the uh, gel, which I believe it is. Mm. Not very deep. Oh, it looks like we got through. Okay. <laughs> we might have to lighten our gambits in a hair because we didn't quite make it through with the 45 pound bow, but I'm not sure we'll try with the other one. I'm sure everybody's going to want to see this because it's very interesting. It didn't make it into our gel. The light gambeson stopped the 45 pound bow with the bodkin, so we'll try it. We may either adjust our gambeson or we'll see our heavier bow if it can make it. I'm here with a 60 pound bow. It's not quite a war bow being 100 or 120 pounds or something, but it is 60 pounds. It's a quite formidable bow. We're gonna try that with our uh, bodkin point and see if it pierces that canvas and into the ballistic shell. Yeah, it looks like we might have a penetration. We'll see how deep and how much damage we actually did. It did make a difference between that and the uh, And I'm not moving this in the gambeson, I'm just checking to see how deep we got it. So without mail, that's a good almost three inch penetration and into that heavy ballistic shell. This is like 20% ballistic shell. And that was through our, our lighter gambeson. So it might need some reinforcement for this bow. Now we have the 45 pound bow and our bodkin point. And we're going to test our 14 gauge 5 16 uh, rings of butted chain mail with a light layer of gambeson underneath and our ballistics gel medium and we're going to see what the 45 pound bow can do and this is sort of like control for when we get ready to test the trinity weave later not much oh no i think i may have yep i knocked a single ring loose but it didn't go through. But it did not go through. That would protect you at that gauge and that. Uh, and the gambeson did pretty well on its own too. So it probably didn't yeah. even go to the gambeson that time. Did let's walk up and look at it. 
see where you hit. Right here is where we hit. It loosened a couple of rings, but I see a little piercing here. But it didn't even really go into the cloth. Nope. This will protect you. Okay. Let's try the heavier. Let's try a heavier pound bow. We test with the 45 pound bow. Now we're going to go to the 60. We're going to upgrade and we're going to use another bodkin point against the uh, 14 gauge 5 16th diameter chain uh, covering on light gambeson and uh, the ballistics gel underneath. Ah, looks like you got a penetration there. Let's see how much it slowed it down by. Remember, this is butted mail, so it tends to unbend. And it doesn't have to unbend much due to the size of that arrowhead. Nope, I did not. I made it to the ballistics gel, but it is not a kill. It didn't I made go it, in. I made it to it, but I did not go in. Let's see how much is actually in there, if we can actually get it out. Uh, we made it in about this far, and we took some damage to our bodkin, but... No real, uh, did we even damage the ballistic shell? Oh, I don't even, there's no damage. So it actually pushed in, gave, and protected you. Not Pretty bad. Interesting. But it did, it did stick in it and it went into our mail. So that's the effect. Of a 60 pound bow on 14 gauge, 5 16 rings of butted, butted chain. We just bent together. Yep. It's extremely heavy for reenactment, but I mean. Very nice. With proper gambeson, it could save your life. I don't think they would wear it for one reason. And that's just because it would get unbent in battle and it was very expensive to make and you would lose your rings. I'm back with the 60 pound bow and we have 16 gauge, 5 16 inch, 5 16 inch rings and they're silver soldered. That is my equivalent because I don't have any riveted mail at the current time or riveted solid every in the row to testing that. And the idea is a lighter mail, uh, you can wear a lighter gambus under it and it should be very protective. It has proven itself before, so let's try it with the 60 pound bow and uh, our bodkin point, and we'll go ahead and see what it does. Ooh! Nothing, not at all. It hit hard though. Was unable to it hit the like, I mean, it really hit. It hit like a ton of bricks, but there's no damage whatsoever to the male. And it did some damage to our bodkin. If you want to look at a close-up of it right here, you can see the actual solder. You can see each ring soldered shut. And these are round rings, not flat rings. Some flat rings are too thin, tend to cut. And they're cut with sharp objects. But there's no point in cutting on these. They'll just put ball on them. We're back with the coming attraction. The thing that everybody wanted to watch is the bolted trinity that was sent to us. And it is stainless steel washers, I believe. They're hardened. So this is unusual. Most most uh, male armor was not hardened that I know of. I've heard that it's possible to have hardened mail late, late century. So, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's very rare. Now so there's anyway. a little overlap on that bolted trinity. There's two pieces and they overlap approximately right in the middle there. So like, kind of might... like if you had a riding halberd and it was hanging that way on you. We did that because we wanted full coverage and we only have two pieces of that size and we wanted to do coverage over our uh, gas ballistics gas gel. Yeah. Ballistics gel. So let's go ahead and test it out, see how it performs. Woo! Dang! Like I, I didn't think anything was going to come apart. See, look what it did to your, look what it did to the arrow. I totally messed it up. I don't see anything on the Nope, damage. nothing wrong with the no damage weave, but check out the arrow. Uh, yeah. It cut right into it. That's pretty nasty, man. I want to try one. Well, certainly, let's try it out. Hell yeah. Take a shot. We're just going to. Ooh. Nothing. That hit it hard, but still nothing. Any damage at all whatsoever? Well, to the to this, to the arrowhead, yes. To the to the bow, uh, I mean to the to the bolt of trinity weave, no. There, there's no damage to that at all. But this thing is getting beat up. Ooh, we might have an unbending. We'll walk in. Yeah, if you want to see it. We didn't lose a ring. We just had one unbend in the weekend part there. But it didn't make it through. There's no damage to the Gambison. Gambison, but we did unbend a ring. I'll have to bend back together if I can do it. All right, we're back, and we've got an idea here from Elgrim. We're going to do a tandem shoot. We're going to both shoot at the exact same time and try to nail it with a 45-pound bow and uh, Waylon's bow of penetration here, because apparently he's done pretty good today. Yeah. 
Ooh, nice. Not bad. I think I hit and you hit right after it. That's pretty sweet, man. Let's see what yours did. Woo! Okay, you're the I don't sunk think. It. I don't think he wants to hit anything. I think he just got caught. Yeah, I'm gonna get the camera. He got caught with his eyes. It did not have it. Just slipped in between the rings. Nice. Yours slipped in between the rings. It doesn't look like mine did anything. On this shot, mine did nothing. Yours just slipped in between the rings. It's just caught in the mail. Are you sure that's me? We'll have to go back on the slow mo and see who it is. No, it's yours because I think you had the fletching that was kind of. Yeah, that it. I'll be danged. Yeah. What it did is it slipped in between the mail. You can see here, there's nothing unbent, nothing damaged. It's just the weave design. It went in at an angle. It twisted the arrow as it went in due to it being loose like this, and it just caught the arrow. There's no damage here. It didn't go deep enough to do anything through the actual gambus. So the Bolt of Trinity weave will protect you against bows? I would say most certainly. I don't know how much more power of a bow, but... Um, at least up to good. 60 and 45, it'll be all right. Yeah, 60. Uh, he wasn't quite sure on the pound of the bow. I think it's about 60 pounds, 60, 65. 65. I think it's 65 the way it's shooting, but hey. Now, who knows? It works, and that's I all that matters. I know this bow shoots very well, so... It works, and that's all that matters. Yeah, that one I think was almost a fluke because it unbent one ring. And what I'm saying, it just unbent a ring, which we have it right here. If the ring hadn't, hadn't unbent at the way it hit and pried at it, because I think it did that same angle thing and tried to turn, it would have still been together in that spot. It didn't make it through whatsoever. Whew. It did not actually make it through the mail. Most of the hits haven't even opened the rings up since they're hard. I don't see any other openings in it. Other Pretty room. sweet. Yeah, that was the only one we got. I'd here. love to have a whole shirt of that mail. Oh, it'd be very nice. I don't think I don't think they would have actually made you it. You could like use this that for zombie in, survival. It's very, very, very nice. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little episode here with our guest, Waylon. Thank you so much for the Bodkins. It's a lot of fun. How did they turn out for you? Well, they had a lot of damage to them. <laughs> oh, that's, that's <laughs> mean. They snapped one clean off, the other two, the tips bent on them. You know, they weren't yeah. really made to be And that was the uh, Bolt of Trinity weave that did that to these. Yeah. Oh, most that's certainly. some tough you, stuff. You got this a hole one. through the uh, I did, 14 I did gauge. One. Yeah. Uh, Five six, six inches six, rings, yeah. and uh, that was made good. by Marquez, believe it or not, years yeah, ago. That was Marquez that we used. They gave it to me as a gift. Never finished the sleeves on it. But okay. uh, as for butted mail, I don't think they wore it that often historically because it would have to be such heavy gauge to keep it from unbending. Yeah. And uh, the problem is you lose too many. Then rings. you start relying. Then you start relying on your thin gambus underneath to protect you, which we proved does protect you underneath. Right. right. And we you saw can, that. The one oh, yeah. advantage to mail is to have less padding and less gambus in so you're not as bulky or as That's high. true. That's one Very of the uh, advantages. Not, not to mention it's basically cut proof. But anyway, yeah. our Bolt of Trinity performed very well. Yeah, uh, thank we you, Earl. We had one ring on Ben and fall out, and I think it was just a fluke the way it hit. Somehow. The way, yeah. The pressure acted just like a pry bar and unbent it because they are possibly to, to, you could bend them. I mean, obviously. So for a modern chain mail, that's uh, pretty effective. Modern mail or chain armor, yes, it's very effective. I was impressed with it. Yeah. Not bad at all. Not Thanks bad. for sending this to us. And uh, we also had a patron that sent us a donation to, to do this. Thank you so much. It helped out. So I right. helped get us materials for him to do some botkin points for That's us. Right. And uh, it took us a while to get this together. Sorry about that. Right. But, uh, so if you time. enjoyed this video, please please like our video if you enjoyed this video, guys. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. We like subscribers here. So uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Say that three times fast. Oh. Yeah, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> Be sure to be sure to like this video and uh, find us on Facebook at Brandon Elgar as well. Remember it's and you can ask to join our clothes group where you get exclusive content at Thane Thran YouTube Boat Crew. Join the boat crew guys and uh, get special photographs, uh, uh, special videos, and you get to talk one on one with Thran and I on all things anachronistic. And uh, guys, don't forget about our Patreon. That's www.patreon.com/thran, or you can send it to us through PayPal. That's uh, Thane Thran, same as the usual spelling at yahoo.com. That is also the PayPal ID, so if you want to go directly there, but be sure and send me an email. You can send that to my Gmail, which is the same uh, uh, ID. Thanks, right? right. So, so let and, me know uh, what it's for or why you're sending it to me, otherwise I'll be confused. That's right. Let's do it. Which one is use it for? Right. And once again, we'd like to thank you, Euros, and thanks to our special guest, Waylon. Thank you much. No. Shield brother, right there. I feel like Bobby. Bobby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you'd be Sam, and you'd be Dean. Digits. Digits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love these guys. <laughs> Farewell, y'all. Farewell. <laughs>